Good morning. Thank you for joining us today for an important commemoration of the Young Street tragedy, which represents a dark chapter in our city's history. More importantly, it's an opportunity for us to pay tribute to those we lost, those who suffered trauma in their lives that day, and those who served on that day. I'm joined today by Councillor John Fillion, who represents the ward where the Young Street tragedy occurred and who's been a constant present comforting the community and all the people involved. Today we are marking three years since the Young Street tragedy shocked our city. Along with every Toronto resident, I'm sure, I remember April 23rd, 2018, so vividly in all of its horror. Our entire city was rocked and saddened by the heinous act of violence that took place right in the heart of North York. There was a terrible loss of life that day, there were life-changing injuries, and there was a loss of innocence for our city. All of that happened three years ago, but the passage of time has not dulled the searing impact of that terrible tragedy. The suffering and the pain continue to follow us. To this day, I'm still overwhelmed with anger and with sadness that 10 innocent lives were senselessly lost and 16 more were needlessly altered forever. Not to mention the hundreds and thousands of lives of family, of friends, of co-workers and of many other people who also suffer to this day. We cannot and we will not forget the memory of those who were taken from us by this cowardly and deliberate attack. Renuka Amarasinga, Andrea Braden, Geraldine Brady, Sohee Chung, Anne-Marie D'Amico, Mary Betty Forsyth, Chulmin Eddie Kang, Ji Hun King, Munir Najjar, and Dorothy Sewell. Councillor Fillion and I will pause now, with many of you at home watching us online, for a moment of silence in their memory. Thank you. The ten candles beside me are lit in their honour, and they will be placed in my office window tonight here at Toronto City Hall as we honour their memory and grieve with their families and their loved ones. These candles will accompany a dimming of the Toronto sign after dusk tonight in honour of those same victims, families and loved ones. Today, we also think of the 16 people whose lives were forever altered by life-altering injury and trauma brought about by the events of the Young Street tragedy. Our thoughts today are also with Amoresh, Amir, Beverly, Bob, Catherine, Dina, Echo, Hyun Jun, Jun Sek, Mavis, Morgan, So Ra, Robert, Samantha, and Samantha, and Alexandra, who sadly passed away this year. And so these 16 flowers, in all their uniqueness and vibrancy, represent those whose lives were sadly and tragically altered on that same day, three years ago today. I know I speak for the entire city when I say that we hope that to the greatest extent possible, they, the 16 of them, can live full and healthy lives supported by all of us as they try to move forward from that tragic day three, day three years ago. We will not forget all of these victims that we lost, those who were injured, and their families and friends. I know that earlier this year the judicial proceedings opened some still fresh wounds, but also hopefully offered some relief to some, but in no way did that process or its outcome take away the fact that lives were lost and families and friends and others, the city itself is still hurting. Make no mistake, these lives were robbed at the hands of misogyny and hatred for women. It is in this recognition of what lay behind this tragedy that we are able to truly fight against this and any form of hatred in our city. It has absolutely no place in the City of Toronto and we must all fight it wherever and whenever we see it. No matter how small the act, 
no matter how short or isolated the comment. This kind of hatred always starts somewhere, and we have to deal with it where and when it starts. I am committed to this, and I know that the residents of this city share that same sentiment with me, and I know that we will act together to be vigilant and to be proactive in this area and fight this hatred with all that we have. Before I finish, I do want to thank the residents and bystanders who helped on that day and who continue to honour this day with us, as we will continue to do each year. A lot of those residents and bystanders offered critical first aid and human comfort in those first grim, terrible moments on that day three years ago. And of course, our eternal gratitude is also extended to all of the heroes that day who served so violently on the front lines as they do every day, but that day they were called upon to perform in a particularly heroic manner. We will remain forever grateful to our police officers and our paramedics and our firefighters, hospital staff and special constables. This was something that impacted our whole city and it transcended beyond North York. And while I know those affected by the tragedy, those whose hearts still ache in grief, while they will never find true closure, every year on this day we will gather, virtually or in person, to continue to commemorate this loss and to support one another and to support our city. As a city, we want to remember and memorialize those lives and that loss with a permanent fixture. And I thought I would update you just briefly on that because I know a lot of people are wondering about that process. Our plans for a permanent memorial are continuing to move forward. The city has completed its initial consultation with the families and others most impacted upon by this tragedy. A Young Street Tragedy Memorial Advisory Committee is being created to deliver a final report to the City Council by the end of this year. And while I understand that this process has taken time and will take more time, we want to make sure that we do this right. So thank you to one and all, especially those most directly affected by this, thank you for your patience. This memorial won't bring them back, the victims and those who suffered as a result of the Young Street tragedy, but it represents a small symbol of that day in April, three years ago, a day that residents were and continue to be shaken by, and one that continues to impact our lives. I hope that the residents take the time today to think about that terrible moment in our city's history three years ago today, and reflect on the lives lost, on the surviving victims whose lives were so altered by that day's events, and on all the family members and friends and co-workers who were also affected by this tragedy. Our city, the whole city, the mayor, the city council, all of the people of this city are thinking of them today. I would now like to call uh, to the podium uh, Councillor John Fillion, who's caring for this community and for everything that's happened during and in the aftermath of the Young Street tragedy has been so evident uh, every single day, and ask him to say a few words. Thank you. Um, April 23rd, uh, 2018 is the saddest, most traumatic day in the history of Willowdale. I remember walking along Young Street in the, the days that followed that and everybody you would run into would just be so uh, distraught, uh, agonized, um, thinking about the uh, terrible devastation, the, the loss of 10 innocent lives and the terrible injuries to 16 others. Um, but along with that, trauma came something remarkable, um, an almost spontaneous desire uh, to honor the victims with an outpouring of love uh, for them, but also a, um, a real desire in the community to comfort one another, to look after one another um, at a time when everybody was obviously, had suffered so much and people were suffering so much and um, that's how I choose to remember those days and it's how the community continues to honor the memory of those who lost their lives that day. Thank you. 